the Dana Service Manual AXSM0038 to demonstrate the procedures for inspecting a Dana steer axle to accurately measure kingpin bushing clearance. This will also explain the correct procedure for overhauling this portion of the assembly if required. It's important to properly measure and maintain the steer axle assembly to ensure years of trouble-free operation and maximum life. First, the inspection. This will determine if the steer axle requires any additional service procedures. Before we begin, remember, safety is a top priority. Follow all accepted standard safety procedures. Always wear appropriate protective safety gear as required. For this initial inspection procedure, you should wear safety glasses. Start by blocking the front and rear tires of the rear driver axle. Never take chances. Jack up the front of the vehicle, then support the vehicle with jack stands under the steer axle beam. Remove the front wheels from the brake drums so that a knuckle to kingpin bushing end play measurement can be taken. Mount a magnetic base dial indicator to the top of the beam of the steer axle. Now, place the tip of the indicator on the back side of the knuckle. Zero the indicator. Pull up and push down on the spindle end and record the total movement of the indicator. Now, mount the dial indicator on the bottom of the beam to measure the bottom bushing. Place the indicator tip on the back side of the knuckle. Again, zero the indicator. Then pull up and push down on the spindle end and record the total movement. If the total indicator reading is less than 15 thousandths of an inch, no further repairs are necessary. You may reassemble the wheels. If the total indicator reading from the top or bottom bushing exceeds 15 thousandths of an inch, the bushings should be replaced. If the service procedure is required, you should wear safety glasses and follow all established safety procedures. Start by removing the wheel hub, wheel bearings, and the brake assembly. Then, remove the tie rod and cotter pin and castle nut. Use a pickle fork to remove the tie rod end from the tie rod arm. If you are overhauling the left hand knuckle, remove the steer linkage end in the same manner. Now, remove the two kingpin knuckle caps on the top and bottom. From this point on, for video demonstration purposes only, we have removed the axle from the vehicle. Next, Remove the nuts from the draw keys. Use a hammer and drift to remove the draw keys. They will be replaced as part of the service procedure, so don't worry about causing damage to the threaded ends. Now, remove the kingpin. Some kingpins will not be easy to remove. A drift and hammer may be required. Again, the kingpin will be replaced, so don't worry about damaging the end of the pin. Remove the knuckle from the axle beam. Clean any rust, dirt, or grease from the knuckle and beam assemblies using a clean shop rag and a solvent. Next, remove the old bushings and seal from the knuckle assembly. Use the proper driver for the model of axle you are working on. See the Dana Service Manual AXSM0038 for the kingpin diameters for each model. It is important not to damage the bore of the knuckles. Always use a bushing driver tool. With the proper driver and a brass hammer, drive out the top and bottom bushings and seal. Once removed, wipe out the inside of the knuckle bore and then inspect for any damage. If the bore has been wallowed out from significant bushing wear, replace the knuckle. Next, we'll install the new bushings. Before you start driving the bushings into position, make certain the seam of the bushing is oriented properly. It must be between the 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock, or between the 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock positions. This will ensure that the seam is not located in a highly loaded area. This is important. The bushings in all Dana service kits are pre-sized. You do not need to ream them. The bushings must also be driven to the proper depth. A line can be made on the driver to indicate when the bushing is at the correct depth. Bushing depth will vary with the axle model. 
Check the Dana Service Manual, AXSM0038, for the depth chart to determine the correct depth for each model. All measurements should be taken from the top of the bushing to the top of the knuckle surface. Drive the bushing into the knuckle to the proper depth using the correct driver. Now, install the new grease seals. These should be installed to a depth of 1 16th of an inch with the lip of the seal facing toward the center of the knuckle. If the seals are installed with the lip of the seal facing the bushing, you will not be able to grease the kingpin joint when the unit is reassembled. Put the seal on the bushing driver with the lip in the proper position. Use the proper driver and install the seals. Be sure they are square in the bore. The 1 16th of an inch depth is important so that the seal is not damaged when the knuckle is reinstalled. In order to ensure proper repair and long life of the new bushings, there are three important factors. One, bushing seam position. Two, bushing depth. And three, correct seal installation. When doing this repair, even the little things can make a big difference. Now, reinstall the knuckle assembly to the steer beam. Make sure there is no contamination on the bushings or grease seal. Apply a thin layer of grease to the bushings and seals. Position the knuckle over the axle beam with the tie rod end at the bottom. Install the thrust bearing so that the open end is facing the ground. Install the kingpin. This should be done by hand or by lightly tapping it into place with a rubber mallet. Push it down until it passes through the thrust bearing. Now we're ready to set the vertical play. Place a jack and a piece of wood under the knuckle assembly. Raise the jack until the steer beam starts to move. It will be necessary to remove the kingpin. There should be enough pressure from the jack to keep the assembly in place. Add some shims between the steer beam and the knuckle assembly. Remember, use as few shims as possible to fill the space. Start with 30 thousandths inch shims and add as many as you can. The tighter, the better. Remember, it's better to use one 10 thousandths inch shim rather than two 5 thousandths inch ones, for example. Now we'll reinstall the kingpin. It's a good idea to mark the top of the kingpin with a grease pencil to indicate the position of the draw key flats. Reinstall the kingpin so that the draw key flats will line up with the draw key holes in the steer beam. Push the kingpin in by hand. You may have to use a rubber mallet to tap it into place. Do not force it. If the kingpin does not pass through the shim pack easily, remove the kingpin and realign the shims. Now, with the kingpin installed, install the draw keys. On the E-Series axle, the keys are installed from the rear of the axle so that the nuts will face the front of the vehicle. Use a brass hammer to lightly seat the draw keys. Use caution. They may have to be removed if more shims are needed. With the kingpin held in place, check the vertical play of the knuckle assembly. Place a dial indicator on the steer beam so that the indicator tip will contact the machine surface on top of the knuckle. Release the pressure from the jack and zero the dial indicator. Now, reapply pressure to the jack. The indicator should read no more than 12 thousandths of an inch. Remember, the tighter the better. If you get a reading between 1 thousandths and 5 thousandths of an inch, that is even better. The vertical play has been set. Now, seat the draw keys. To do this, use a drift and a hammer to seat each draw key. Drive the key in until it stops. Now, install the draw key spring washers. When installing spring washers on axle models that use two washers, the convex sides should be touching and the concave sides should contact the nut and beam surfaces. When installing a single spring washer, the convex side should face the nuts. Install the draw key nuts and torque to specifications. In this case, they will be torqued to 35 foot-pounds. It's very important to reseat each draw key after torquing. Use a drift and hammer to reseat the draw keys. 
drive the draw key in as far as possible. Now, retorque the nuts. Check the end play of the knuckle assembly. Dana uses a pre-sized bushing for service. The end play should be between one thousandths and eight thousandths of an inch. To do this, attach the dial indicator at the top of the steer beam. Place the tip of the indicator on the back side of the knuckles assembly. Zero the indicator. Push down and pull up on the spindle of the knuckle. The total measurement should be no greater than eight thousandths of an inch. Repeat this procedure for the bottom of the knuckle. Now, install the compressible inserts to the top and bottom between the top of the kingpin and the kingpin caps that will go on next. Install new kingpin caps and zerts. First, tighten with a socket and ratchet. Then torque these E1202I caps to 75 foot-pounds. This is a good time to grease both the top and bottom of the kingpin joint. Remember to apply grease until it passes through the shim pack and thrust bearing to beam interfaces. Also, when performing a scheduled greasing of the kingpin joint and or tie rod ends, always grease until clean grease is seen coming from between the shim pack and thrust bearing to beam interfaces. The main reason for bushing wear is contamination between the bushing and kingpin surfaces. Check the tie rod end boot for damage and replace it if needed. Now, reinstall the tie rod end and castle nut. Torque the nut to spec and install a new cotter pin. Reinstall the brake and hub assemblies. Always check wheel bearings, preload and steer axle toe before putting the vehicle back in service. Wheel bearing end play must be between one thousandths and five thousandths of an inch. Toe in specification is one sixteenth of an inch for an unloaded vehicle. See the Dana service manual AXSM0038 for the proper adjustment procedure. This concludes the steer axle overhaul and repair. If you need further information or have any questions before you begin, contact the Dana Commercial Vehicle Systems Group at 1-800-826-4357.